process of a new scratch build airplane and you need to design a wing for it. But how big do you make this wing? Lift is a force acts on a wing due to a differential in pressure between the bottom of the wing and the top of the wing. The air flowing over the top of the wing is at a higher velocity than the air flowing below the wing. And due to a thing called Bernoulli's equation, the higher the velocity of the air means the lower the pressure of the air. This means that the pressure underneath the wing is higher than the pressure above the wing. And because we know that pressure is force over area, a larger area equals more force. Basically, the bigger your wingspan, the more lift force you have. Lift is also created by angle of attack, which is basically the angle of the aerofoil to the airflow. This creates a lift because it directs the airflow downwards. So how do you calculate the lift of an aerofoil without even building a plane? You could use a wind tunnel, but they're quite costly and quite hard to come by. So the next best thing is to use a CFD software, which stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics. It's pretty much a virtual wind tunnel, which you can design your aeroplane in a CAD model, import it into the CFD software, and then change certain parameters to get certain lift and drag results. So when importing an aerofoil into a CFD software, you'd import an aerofoil with a set wingspan, I normally set it to one metre, uh, set it to an angle of attack of zero degrees, and measure the lift that it produces. Then increase the angle of attack by one degree and measure the lift again, and keep repeating this. A normal aerofoil will get to around 12 to 15 degrees, and then it will start to stall. At the point at which the aerofoil will start to stall, the lift will start to decrease and the drag will start to increase drastically. This can be shown on the graph that I've plotted right here. However, this is normally dependent on the wingspan and the wing cord uh, and various other aspects of the wing. So this is where we calculate what's called the coefficient of lift, which is completely independent of the wingspan. So to calculate the coefficient of lift, you basically type in the lift and area of the wingspan into this following equation. This means that the value of the coefficient of lift will be completely independent of the wingspan. If you plot the coefficient of lift against angle of attack graph again, it will pretty much look the same as the lift versus angle of attack graph. So now you're probably wondering, what is the coefficient of lift and why would I need it? The maximum coefficient of lift occurs when the aerofoil stalls. So by plugging the coefficient of lift uh, maximum value into this equation, and also plugging in the wing area and the weight of the aircraft, you can calculate a stall speed. You can also plot the same graph with uh, the flaps down on the aerofoil. This will usually show a pretty similar shaped graph, but it will have a higher lift value at a lower angle of attack. And the aircraft will also stall at a lower angle of attack. So that's the wing calculations done in terms of lift. Uh, what else can you do in a CFD software? Well, in my previous concept video of my vertical takeoff aircraft, I explained something called downwash from the uh, main wing that will affect the rear elevator. In the CFD software, you can see how the air flows around the aircraft and you can tell whether the downwash from the uh, main wing actually affects the rear elevator at all. Here you can see an example of my vertical takeoff plane being tested with the CFD software. As you can see the airflow around the fuselage is creating an upwash effect due to the ramp at the back of the fuselage which is then being forced upwards towards the rear elevator and it's kind of causing a weird angle of attack with the rear elevator. So in this instance, instead of having a downwash effect from the main wing, I have an upwash effect from the fuselage. So in this model, instead of having that rear ramp on the back of the fuselage, I tapered it horizontally so that the airflow wouldn't be forced up so much. Instead, it would be forced around the fuselage. So instead of creating an upwash, it sort of created a few uh, like spiral effects. But in this case, it's not as much of a problem because uh, that wouldn't change the angle of attack for the rear elevator. So as you can see, a CFD software is pretty handy when you're testing out the aerodynamics of a plane. However, there still are a couple of advantages of using a wind tunnel. Uh, for example, when you do the calculations for the CFD software, you can choose how many calculations it does per volume of the wind tunnel. Obviously, you want to have the most amount of calculations per volume to get the most accurate result. But even on a decent PC, this still takes ages to do, and the results still aren't perfect. So whether it takes two minutes to calculate an alright result, or two hours to get a pretty accurate result, I know that I'd still rather be out in field using some good old trial and error. Thanks for watching. Thank you once again for watching. If you found this video interesting and you want to see some more, then let me know in the comments down below. Uh, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please check out my other videos. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. That went really bad. <laughs>